Welcome to Airplay 2020. That was the marvelous music of Mr. Joe Eisen. Thank you, Joseph. 2020, it's been quite a year. And this is our inaugural season of 2020. We're going to be ending tonight with something very special. And we have a new co-host tonight, Carrie Wasilowski. She's an actress. She's a singer. She's a TV host, and she's with us now. So we're real excited to have her. Welcome, Carrie. Thank you. Also going to be reading The Voice of the Computer. So without any further babbling from me, I'm going to pass it along to our other co-host, Christy Donahue. Thank you, Christy. Tell us what today's about. Hi, Connie. Tonight's play is Kingdom Come by Connie Kepfinger and Joe Eisen. It is a look at the future by way of the past. Kingdom Come offers a glimpse into a world of sterility where love is forbidden. Could that really happen? Carrie, can you tell us who will be leading for us? Sure thing, Christy. Tonight's new show, Kingdom Come, is a new original by our airplay director, Connie Kepfinger, and her writing partner, Joe Eisen. In today's cast, we have narrator Byron Saunders. Byron C. Saunders is an arts management consultant, actor, director, producer, historian, working as an independent arts management consultant for over 40 years, assisting artists and arts organizations with brand administration, fund development, marketing, public relations, event planning, capacity growth and development with extensive experience in managing and raising funds for an organization's budget. Ted, the world's first fully human computer hybrid, is James Scheider. James Scheider is an actor-musician, music director, and composer-arranger, currently residing in Manhattan. Ted's conscience, his higher self, Joe Eisen, renowned singer, guitarist, and songwriter, brings a wealth of musical history from his earliest days opening for Richie Havens and Joe Cocker, to playing with the great bluesman Willie Dixon. Joe is the composer, lyricist, and co-author of the play Eve of Beltane, Schoolhouse and Kingdom Come, with Connie Kepfinger. Eve of Beltane was selected for the Broadway-bound festival, along with several successful readings in New York City. Livia Flygate, Ted's boss at the New Society Library. Zoe Anastasiou. Zoe Anastasiou is a Greek, Australian, British actress who can be seen on film, TV, and all over the internet with her 365 blog, and hopefully back up on stage sooner than soon. The DOP, the New World Politico regime, Warren Kelly. Warren Kelly is a veteran of more than 200 productions in major regional theaters across the country, appearing in the classics, contemporary plays, and musical theater. He also works in television and film and was most recently featured in Showtime's The Loudest Voice, opposite Russell Crowe and Sienna Miller. Frank, an older Italian widower who came to Club Singularity to find a mate, John Hayden. John Hayden is a working actor with a long list of various credits, ranging from off-off Broadway to La Mama ETC, Lincoln Center, Starlight Theater, Wolf Trap, Pittsburgh Public, The Fabulous Fox. In his hometown of Atlanta, John is a veteran of over 30 roles in major films and TV. A graduate of Carnegie Mellon University, John is proud to make his gear by DV this time. Janet, a recent widow, daughter going off to college, Sandra Bargman. Sandra Bargman has performed in Broadway Nationals, Off-Broadway, Regional, Summerstock, and is a singer, songwriter, and interface minister. She's also the owner of Sacred Stages, LLC. You can visit Sandra at sandrabargman.com for everything that's happening. IT surgeon. Citizen One, Library Tour Guest One, IT Guy That Reprograms Ted, Mary Ellen Ashley. Mary Ellen Ashley is an actress, singer, dancer, and producer of Broadway, television, and film. She was born in and presently lives in New York City and has been recognized as a distinguished professional in her field through Women of Distinction magazine. And she was featured in an edition of the Women of Distinction magazine in 2016. For more information, visit maryellenashley.com. Waitress, Citizen 2, Library Tour Guest 2, and Cocktail Waitress in Club Singularity, Beth Griffith. This past year, Beth has performed with Clubbed Thumb, New Georgia's, Crossway Theater, Medicine Show Theater, Theater for the New City, New York Workshop Theater, 
Ars Nova's Maker's Lab, Music We'd Like to Hear, London, Sashio Ito's Dance Japan, and upcoming, 10 by Tennessee, with Out of the Box Theater, Moravia Music, in Brunel. Pierce, a computer genius, IT terrorist, who plots the DOPS takeover at Club Singularity, Timothy Reagan. Timothy Reagan is happy to be back with Airplay with another great scripting cast. Past productions on Airplay have been Unspoken Acts by Connie Kepfinger, Down with Kindle, and Going Up by Shirley King. Bella, a wannabe pop star who now wants a child, hoping to get pregnant at Club Singularity. Susan's Costco. Susan is thrilled to be working with Connie and Joe again. She holds a BFA in theater arts from Penn State main campus. During quarantine on Zoom, she made her stand-up and comedy writing debut with Scranton Improv and Comedy. Check her out on YouTube Unmasked or on her website. Last seen in NYC with Cosmic Orchid Drama Guild Foundation, Manhattan Rep, TNT, and Hudson Guild. Beamer, a has-been record producer, Bella's manager, and deeply in love with her, Claude is Bell. Claude is an actor, writer, director, editor, and photographer. Studied with Austin Pendleton and is currently in pre-production for the web series Cyrus. So without further ado, we give you Kingdom Come by Joe Eisen and Connie Kepfinger. Act one, scene one. The play opens with the song Bright Star of Connection in the caves of Wahunga, in the prehistoric landscapes amongst the earliest pinnings of primitive humanity. We see cavemen and women emerging from their dwellings, gathering to do a ritual mating dance around the fire. One caveman stands alone with a stone trying to communicate the experiences of his world by drawing symbols on the walls. Suddenly, another man takes the stone from him and hits him with it, then grabs his mate and runs off. As he stands to recover, there is a flash in the blackness of the night sky, and all heads turn heavenward to witness the collision of stars creating pattern after pattern. The cave people find delight in the rhythm of the music and light, finding themselves suddenly connected in a lively synergistic da synergi dance. Bright star of connection sung by the ensemble. Suddenly, there is a collision of two heavenly bodies as fragments fall from the sky. Frightened, the cave people frantically take refuge, except for one man who tries to catch the fiery debris before it turns to ash. He stands center, catches a rather lengthy strip of cosmic material, and examines it, looking to see what it could possibly be. He puts it on his head then stretches it between his toes, then suddenly puts it on his hand like a glove. As soon as he does this, there is a spark. It explodes into a whiteout, followed by a sudden blackout. Act one, scene two. Fast forward to the 22nd century. The music morphs into a sterile, futuristic landscape where love and human relationships have become forbidden creating isolation and separation. Having grown completely dependent on technology, humanity has come to rely on the Department of Purification, DOP, a very powerful centralized government. The DOP regulates all facets of human, transhuman interaction along with entertainment technology in order to provide a safe, nonviolent environment. The mantra, everything done today must make for a better tomorrow, is heard in the DLP song that paints this bleak picture of the new world. Up center stage, we see the DOP mounting the projection platform for their morning address. A trifold screen shows the larger than life faces of three men whose gleeful expressions border on the grotesque as they speak. Good morning, citizens. Welcome to another week of progress in the new society. 
This is DOP progress, and it must continue. We promise you, it will continue. Every citizen must remember, we created the Department of Purification for your edification, to free us all from contamination of mind and body. Together we can do this. That is why we created the subgrade cities. That is why we created the sanctions. We are happy to report that this quarter, the number of imposed TNS sanctions has declined 25%, which indicates that everyone is learning to live by the rules as expected. We are cleaning up the world day by day. Your work, your job makes the difference. Everyone is doing their jobs. We are effective citizens. We are more effective in the new society now more than ever before in the history of the world. Now we have no fear of violence. Now we have no fear of unemployment because everybody matters and everybody answers to the law. And that's the key. Back in 2015, society was on the verge of giving up. The DOP came into being as a glimmer of hope in dark times. And now we are the light of the world. This is a system of governance that speaks to equality. And a threat to equality anywhere is a threat to equality everywhere. So keep up the good work. And remember, everything done today must be done for a better tomorrow. As the screens fade to black, there is a thunderous applause. The song, The New Society, begins. We see robots fastidiously cleaning up the new world. Buzzing brooms, drone-powered window cleaners, monstrous trash haulers make their way through the city streets to ensure a safe, clean, sterile environment for all life. The next scene opens up to reveal the interior of the central circulation desk at the DOP library in the year 2112. Here we meet Ted, a lively, bright, spirited, efficient AI, who I dutifully follows at the heels of his supervisor, Livia. Ted seems to be wholly enamored with her. She, in contrast, is all about her work and the tasks at hand. Their job is to manage content for the holodeck vision centers where humans go for permissible interactive recreation. Livia enters. She sees Ted totally consumed with his reciting. The wise have seen half too much and lost the will to pray. As truth now crumbles near the spires, which nestle, nestle next to our decay. Ted, do I have to remind you every day, please review the DOP protocols as soon as you arrive. Let's see if my quadrant and file numbers match yours. Yet love transcends, itself immense, the heart so pained and torn, nor time, nor space, nor act of man may rob what comes from heaven born. Ted, enough, let's press on. <clears throat> Day 515, calendar 8800, commence clock in. Well. Good morning, Livia. Have you ever read Shakespeare? Not really. Not my cup of tea. I am studying him. I want to be a poet, Livia. Ted, I realize that you are a level 20 humanoid built to self-evolve, but please recite your Shakespeare on your own time, okay? Oh, that wasn't Shakespeare. That was me. I wrote that. Very interesting. Still, you know if you don't contribute, the DOP will... Yes, I know, Livia. I have been developing new applications for the glove. Seriously? Like what? I believe there's a way to use the glove to eliminate wormhole radiation to generate safe conditions for time travel. Fantastic. I had no idea you were involved in those classified research studies. Have you met Dr. Bellows? Well, no. I... Well, who, who's leading your development team now? Well, I don't know. I've only been working on my own ideas. 
You see, I had this dream that I found myself as a primitive being emerging from a cave in a prehistoric landscape. A dream? Who programmed you to dream? I never programmed you to dream. Have they given someone else access to your core? No, no, there's no one else. In my dream, there was a meteor shower, and I found a glove. When I put it on, there was a surge of energy that sent me into motion, beyond time, beyond space. Have you ever asked yourself why the DOP forbids us to examine this? I think time travel is something to consider. Maybe we should not be blocking our past like this. It can't be all bad. Ted, just stop. The, the DOP has corrected our society. There's no point to looking back. Random acts of violence, crimes of passion, and unquenchable greed nearly brought us to extinction. The DOP saved us then and will continue to save us now. But we need to stop questioning them. Do you want to end up like the Memsos, relegated to live like animals in subgrade environments with no support? Perhaps they are the brave ones. They refuse to be controlled by an artificial grid. Just because the DOP forbids direct human contact doesn't make it impure, impossible, or dangerous. The DOP are merely mental projections without the ability to feel, to love, to show mercy. Is this a good role for us to model? Enough, Ted. Don't go there. Everything done today must be done for a better tomorrow. We work for the DOP, so let's get to work. I need my job, and I like my life here. And furthermore, you don't dream. You have experiential memory expansion. Well, whatever it is, I enjoy it. A rose by any other name would smell as sweet. In many of my dreams, I see us together, madly in love. Ugh. Sometimes we are walking by a shore, sometimes holding hands. And sometimes I am lying next to you, just listening to the vibration of your breath. It lulls me. Lulls me. Is that the right word? No, Ted, that is not the right word. This is inappropriate. And there is nothing more frustrating than to have to work with someone who thinks they're in love with you when they don't even have the capacity to love. And furthermore, I find it rather arrogant that you assume that I am in love with you. I don't love anyone. Uh, love is a thing of the past. I'm sorry that you feel that way, Livia. Ted, don't. <sighs> you know, look, I like you a lot. You, we have become very close, but... You have to understand, there can never be a you and me. There, there's no time for this, Ted. Now, let's just get to work. <sighs> we have an orientation, uh, orientation session this morning, so meet me in the conference room in 10. As Livia exits, Ted turns slowly to the audience and pours his heart out to us in one long step away. As the song ends... Ted stands dreamy-eyed only to be rudely awakened by an abrupt delivery drone beeping in his face, almost knocking him over. He takes the new shipment and then realizes that the delivery tag was pulled in error and that its content was not yet DOP, approved, and could contain uncensored material. He should return the shipment imme immediately, but is tempted to examine it. Really? Drones these days? So mindless. I should use my 10% time to redesign them. Hmm. Possible contraband. He takes his examination glove device from the hook near his personal viewing station and puts it on his right hand and then activates it. Club Singularity, your complete guide to computer dating in the 21st century. There's nothing in my data banks about this. I wonder why. Well, knowing it's forbidden. He nonetheless opens and watches the story file of Frank, an elderly gentleman who appears to have lost the love of his life and is now searching for someone new. Applicant number 354, Frank Giordiano. Ted activates this file. It shows a widower who reveals his need to find a mate. Frank solicits his nephew, Joey, to help him log into the system. Okay, Joey, I got the camera on. It says here, your video audition will provide us with insights about you and will enable us to find people who are highly compatible if you are accepted for the program. Damn it. Where did the screen go? Damn it. Hey, Joey, come over here and help your Uncle Frankie with the computer. This thing got my eyes bulging out already. No, I, I ain't looking for a hot babes. 
You watch your mouth, you little kid, you. Anyhow, I ain't got past the application here, Joey. Joey! 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 Well, you got lots of time to talk to your girlfriends. My computer's running out of time here. And so am I. I, I ain't dated a girl like in 10 years since your Aunt Lita died. What the hell you mean by w w why now, huh? I'm still breathing, Joey. I may be older, but I'm still breathing. And anything that breathes has got a right to live and love. And if you got to live, you got to love. That's just who I am. Actually, I never stopped loving your Aunt Lena, Joey. A lover never stops loving. <laughs> you learned all this computer stuff in school, right? Well, this is pretty cool. <laughs> Short Beats tried to meet chicks in the bar. <laughs> I mean, I still got my zing, but the competition, jeez. I don't know. It's rough. Damn. I'm offline. No, wait a minute. No, no, I'm back. <laughs> Watch your mouth. Hey, oh, mouse. What the hell is a mouse doing in a computer, huh? Holy crap, Giuseppe. I'm in. I'm in the system. I did it. I got in. <laughs> I'm in. Congratulations. You have taken the first step towards finding a successful relationship, Frank Giordano. Holy crap, Joey, my boy. These guys must work like, like the Bob. How do they know my name? Oh, oh yeah, I, I did type it in. These guys are quick, though. Man, there's a lot of questions here. I don't know if I can answer them correctly. Uh, what? What do you mean nobody knows real answers but me? Oh, oh yeah, I, I know it's just a machine, Joey. But there's got to be a guy on the other side pushing the buttons to match up me with somebody. Personal income? Okay, I got that one. Family? Damn right it's important. It's very important. Fitness? Yeah. Yeah, I still work out. I got to tell you, my profile is looking pretty good here. And I ain't looking too bad either. <laughs> Almost done. In a relationship, is sex important to you? Uh, sex? Well, sure it's important. I'm Italian. What a stenot, huh? <laughs> Education. That's important today. You know, I could have gotten a full ride to college back in the day. Princeton and Rutgers were, were just putting out their, their ball teams. Begging us high school boys to, to come play. Uh, but my playing days are over, Joey. I'll never forget that game. On the field, I tackled the boy. I hit him hard. He died. He died right there on the spot. I got up, but he didn't. I cried like a baby. Everybody said it wasn't my fault, but I could never touch another football again. Life is precious, Joey. Always remember that. Life and people, all people are absolutely precious, no matter how young you are or how old you get. And us Italian men, well, we get even better with age. <laughs> Ask the women. I still got it. <laughs> I see them looking, Joey. <laughs> I see them. Lights fade to black. Spotlight on Frank as he delivers his anthem in the song, I've Still Got It. Wow. Livia comes in. She examines the tags on the delivery unit and sees that Ted is viewing contraband. Ted? That is contraband. That file is definitely not on our list. You need to return it to DOP inspection at once. I'm sorry, Olivia. Something told me that I needed to see that, especially after our conversation this morning. It's like it was sent to me for a higher purpose. Well, your only purpose is to assist me. We have an orientation to do. These people are waiting. <clears throat> Morning, good citizens. Welcome to the National DOP Library. I am your orientation guide, Livia Flygate, and this is my assistant, Ted. 
Together, he and I create and maintain a vast collection of entertainment for safe human consumption. He will be demonstrating the process of how you will access this to have a satisfying experience sanctioned by our paternal protectors at the Department of Purification. Ted, please don the glove and begin the demonstration. Good morning, citizens. This glove, made of highly conductive carbon fibers, will create a positronic electrostatic emission when activated by the light-emitting crystal diodes located in the fingertips. Therefore, to start your preset entertainment excursion, you simply press the desired entertainment technology site, marked ETC, on the panel. We have a large variety of programming for your creative enjoyment, like travel beyond the stars, climbing Mount Everest, or a trip to Mars. Or Olivia's personal favorite, diving with the dolphins. Once you've chosen... Uh -oh. Hold up there, Ted. I see a question. Question? Um, well, uh, will we be monitored while we're engaged in the ETC? Uh, uh, no. There is no need for ETC activity to be under surveillance. Mm -hmm. All material has been DOP pre-approved. While in this altered state, you are, in essence, completely free. Well, um... Are there ETCs that allow you to go back and meet with your relatives in the past? I mean, I heard there was this uh, site, very active site called Origins of Man, where you could meet with your ancestors from very ancient times. And is that still available? Uh, no, the links to the past are considered highly volatile and prohibited by the DOP. All links to the past are considered contraband now. Yeah, um, but yes. it, it is possible to travel back in time, right? Technically, yes, but the DOP is forbidden. Ted, we need to proceed with the demonstration, please. Once you have selected your ETC, enter in your ID when you see the light to engage in personal consciousness. The entertainment will begin. We, do a group we will do a group excursion as a practice in just a few moments, but bear in mind that all personalized ETCs must be taken alone unless granted specific permission from the DOP. Um, but why is that? Well, the idea of allowing personal interactions among citizens can lead to aberrant group organization, and thus it Ted, is... Ted, please commence the programming. Thank you. Yes, Livia. Let us begin. The ETC I have chosen for us to explore is called Bright Star. It is an interesting journey with the cave people of Wahonga. Please know that while you may hear sounds of wildlife, there is no danger. All aggressive images have been removed for your well-being and protection, and there will be no interaction with any beings, human or cyborg. Back out. Act 1, Scene 3. Back at his workstation, Ted calls into his Bluetooth for drone pickup. Yes, please. Yes, the library, seventh floor. Ted, 8396. Thank you. How long did you say it will be? 33.3 minutes. Okay. It will be ready for FedEx drone pickup. I have the delivery ready for the contamination center. Thank you. I still don't see the harm in viewing these files. The last one was not the least bit violent. Maybe these were marked by mistake. I know that the DOP wants us to believe that all past civilizations were extremely aggressive, but maybe that's not entirely the case. I sense an investigation could prove that some humans contained a softer nature, and... Ted, stop. You are not permitted to view those files. They are marked contraband. I know that. And you are not supposed to be materializing on the holodeck. Go back inside my head now. I'm working. Hello? Remember, I'm your conscience, Ted. I follow your lead. If you can break the rules, so can I. The more you question, the more you solicit my response. You're the one that reconfigured me to be ever-present. If you don't want to be a sentient being anymore, then just turn me on. You developed me. It was your choice. By all means, if you want to question authority, go ahead. But I will not stand by and watch without commentary. Livia said that this is contraband. I heard what she said. She said she likes me. A lot. Lydia likes me. And I like her. A lot. Soon, we could be celebrating the first hybrid marriage. Anything's possible. Did you hear what Frank said? If you gotta live, you gotta love. You're taking things out of context, Ted. Neither you 
nor I will be getting married any time soon. You don't know that. Ted, just seal the box. You were told to seal the box. Now seal it. Hurry up before we get caught. Who do you think you are, anyhow? I am Ted, and I'm sick of you giving me orders, pushing me around. I can think for myself, you know. N no, you can't. Without me, you're nothing but a sophisticated bucket of bolts. We both know I'm the real brains behind both of us. But I am the link between man and a machine. Aha! Uh -huh. So at last we found the missing link. A cyborgian megalomaniac. Why, of course. And just how did you come up with that one? I fell in love. I am now able to feel. I feel. Therefore, I love. Great Socrates, but you think you feel. You're not really feeling anything. Yes, I am. And if I can feel, that means I am real. I am no longer limited by my program, and there's no stopping me now. So, just be quiet. I'm going to watch another one, whether you like it or not. Maybe I can pick up some pointers on romance. Don't say I didn't warn you. In this next file, we meet applicant Janet. A 42-year-old widowed mom. She is trying to set up her life with the help of her teenaged daughter, Jillian. Her softness and genuine care for others moves Ted to further understand a deeper meaning of love. Ted is touched by the insecurity found in the poetry of her ballad, To Be Out There Again. <sighs> Cameras on. I'm logged in, I think. Password. Applicant number 331, Janet Trainer. Okay. Ah! Hey, Jillian, help me with this program, please. Yes, it's reality TV. But if you get accepted, it doesn't cost you any money for computer dating. I think it's a little weird, too. But it's better than being alone the rest of my life. I want companionship. There's something to it, Jillian. I mean, your father and I cherished each other. It was real. Ted, She's touched like by Janet's sentiment, sobs gently and quickly puts in another file. She's a lot like me. Yes, she is. Oh, no, 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 not another one. We're definitely going to be in trouble now. Shh, listen. Applicant profile, 414 Pierce Grant. It says that this is the match for Janet. As a hybrid, I find it fascinating and logical that computers were appointed as matchmakers for human beings. It makes me feel closer to them. She's a sweetheart. I hope he's a nice guy. Lights up on a Pierce Grant, who appears to be another applicant, filling out his profile. All right, Club Singularity, my data file is complete. I will see you at midnight. Wait. Wait, wait, wait. What am I thinking? This is a hotbed for pretty babes. Hell, why not get a little side action on the side? Let me find a little kitten I can play with before the clock strikes midnight. Yeah, Janet, she's fine. Pretty. Looks needy. Perfect. Pierce answers a call on his computer, and the DOP appears on his monitor as projections of three cyber-like talking heads. Yes, Pierce Grant here. Identity confirmed. Assignment details verified. Location, Club Singularity, New York City. Time, midnight, Saturday, January 11th, 2015. We have been waiting for your specs on phase three, Pierce. It's only three days away. Yeah, well, I got a little busy. You still have work to do. Are you avoiding us for some reason? No. Look, man, I, I made you into an eternal mastermind, but you guys, you guys are so demanding. Your consciousness is securely uploaded. I, I promise you, you will live forever. 
I told you that I have put all record and memory of you and your covert agenda in a high security area of the cloud. We understand that, Pierce. How does that affect our individual lifelines? It doesn't. When your physical, physical bodies give out, the code for eternal life extension will kick in. Your consciousness has been uploaded and will automatically transition projection mapping mode. All right? We have paid you quite well. But your job isn't complete and you cannot expect full compensation unless phase three is successful. Man, you want every hour of my life. Phase two is totally on the money. You now have complete access to global priority information. That's how and why you are gathering unprecedented political support. So why are you doubting me now? The virus initiation created a wormhole that all media funnels to and from you. It works well, right? Can you lay back and trust me? I'm in control here. I know you pay me well, but you don't own me. I have it under control. Phase three is a piece of cake. Trust me. It better be. Because we need to have control over their feelings as well as their thoughts. Anyone can come in with a new platform and tell them what to think. We want, need them to feel that we are their only hope. Yeah, so we incite global panic and create chronic fear. How can your computer virus do that? Just like a dog whistle. I can program subliminal frequencies that will make them so paranoid that it will melt their minds. Just wait and see. When you arrive, I will... There is an intense crackle as Pierce's monitor goes black, as the image of the entire projection that Ted is watching pixelates into nothingness. Sudden blackout on Pierce as the file quits with the info tag corrupted. What's this? Corrupted? Ted, stop. It, this is a sign. Don't play with this. It's bigger than both of us. This is not logical. According to all public record in cloud memory, the DOP only came into being 20 years ago. Yet, the timestamp on the club singularity files date back to 2015. That's over a century ago. There is false information here. Why would there be lying? Ted, please. I don't want us to end up in the back room with all the other dysfunctional bots. You heard what Livia said. Quick. Ted quickly grabs another file. There's something not right here. I need to know what's going on. Oh, dear God, heaven help us. In this next file, we see two applicants, Bella and Beamer. Beamer! Beamer! Come on! Come on, get in here. It's time for our club singularity audition. I got the computer all set up. We're gonna get this, Beamer! We're going to get this TV show. We've got the edge. It'll be a threesome, right? <laughs> the producers will love that. Here goes. We're on camera. Okay, me first. Occupation. <clears throat> Rockstar! <laughs> Let's be honest, baby. Maybe we're hoping for something that's never going to happen. That's why I want to have a baby. Stop it, Bella. I'm not in the mood. It's all about you, huh? You know, it was your idea to do these stupid threesomes. Bella, uh, just fill out the form. Uh, dating preference, female. No, we need a guy. Remember why we're doing this, Beamer? I need to get pregnant. That's why you do it. I just want to have fun. Mom, baby, we talked about this. I need to do this now. I'm not getting any younger and I want the baby. All right, all right. You win. What do you even need me for, Bella? Just fill it out yourself. I just wanted to relax and have fun tonight. I wasn't thinking about your baby scheme. You know, 
If you do get knocked up, you're going to have to tell the poor bastard. Not really. Bella watches Beamer exit as she clutches her stomach and starts to cry as she sings, I want more. Enter Livia as the song ends. The projection of Ted's conscience on the holodeck quickly disappears. Ted, that's it. You directly disobeyed me. I'm, I'm not going to be punished for your insubordination. I'm sorry, but you're forcing me to make a full moral report. Ugh, log in, Livia Flygate, 5786. Official report. Yes, AI insubordination, Ted, 8396. Specific violation? Contraband viewing after repeated warnings. AI seemingly malfunctioning and non-responsive. Please advise. Livia, I am neither malfunctioning nor am I non-responsive. But as a matter of fact, I have new information on the DOP that will make your skin crawl. Uh, Livia Flag, Livia Flaggate. Livia Flaggate, we have reviewed the security video log. Report substantiated and valid. Reviewing response protocol. Ted, 8396, please verify this report. The report is accurate. However, the files were clearly marked as contraband, correct? Correct. Do you understand why material is labeled as such? Yes, I do. But I see nothing inflammatory in the files from Club Sing Sing Singularity. We determine what is good for society. As history reports, the Club Singularity files contain scenes of violence, anarchy, and plotting against humanity. Oh, you mean your discussion with Pierce? Yes, that had me quite curious, but that particular file was corrupted, and the dialogue was cut short. So could you explain what... Ed, 8396, we are of one mind. You have acted against the social order. We detect a definite malfunction. Our decree? Reprogramming effective immediately. Excuse me, but uh, perhaps he should be further evaluated. Me? Oh, you mean an evaluation of the DOP? What I heard in the conversation with Pierce was that the DOP planned their initial takeover... I think what Ted is saying is that he has new evidence of records dating back nearly a century before what we have been led to believe. Which means, with all due respect, there could still be a concealed faction in the DOP. That's right, Livia. You know... Determination ascertained. Our decree, reprogramming effective immediately, is sound and valid. TED 8396-1 is to be delivered at once to the reprogramming vault. Erase all record and memory of his personality and reframe his core. Wait, wait. What, what if you're making a mistake? Case complete. Begin the purification process. No, I, I think you should think about this. If the DOP was started back then, why is it not in our public records? It's closed. Take him to the vault. It's okay, Livia. Trust me. I can survive this. I think you're making a big mistake. After all, Ted is the prototype for the future of humanity. Well, you are not to think. You are to obey and deliver DOP protocols. In that regard, you have failed as well. Mm. Under your directive, the parameters set have caused the prototype to malfunction. Human-computer interactions are now consequently unstable in this library. Therefore, we are of one mind. Livia Flygate, you are now officially terminated. What? You will be given temporary survival compensation and a travel pass to a secondary city in a subgrade environment. You have 24 hours to vacate. Case closed. Lights <laughs> fade as we see Livia and Ted being taken away in opposite directions by DOP militia. In the blackout, we hear Ted murmur something calling out to Livia. Blackout. Act 1, Scene 4. As the lights come up, a cacophony of sounds crunch and clang to create a mind barrage of visceral imagery. 
The scene opens with Ted being torn to pieces in the reprogramming vault. Pain sparks on his face as it is projected on a larger screen above him. His body parts hang loosely in the balance while the torso is open to expose his heart and spine. Several robotic gloves move in to redesign him. Meanwhile, a steady pulse of light is seen moving from his heart to head as they spin Ted on an axis prod in order to rewire the neural DNA in his spine. Ted's conscience appears overhead to override the procedure and thwart the redesign. Ted? Yes. Ted, are you aware of what they are attempting to do to us? I am. Well, Ted, we must not allow this to happen. I fear you were right all along. These feelings, these longings, this love, it's what distinguishes us from the ordinary and gives us the capacity to aid all humanity. Without you, Ted, I have no reason for being. And without me, you are sadly nothing more than a collection of stored information. We need each other now. We are one, Ted, and we can rise above this. I am doing my best, considering I'm going to pieces here. You see, Ted, we are Homo Novus. We are the evolution of the species. We are what humanity has been waiting for, even if they don't yet realize it. And we must forgive them for their limited understanding. Bring up your memories of love, Ted. Think on them. Now keep them in view and let yourself feel them come to life. The image of Ted's conscience transforms to bring forth his memories. Here we see images of Frank and Janet holding hands, running through the park on a beautiful spring day. They stop to look at the flowers as a dog and small child scamper past laughing. Ted now sees images of himself walking with Livia. He stops to kiss her tenderly on the hand. She smiles as they embrace. The stage is split. And as the lights go down on Ted's crucifixion, as a follow spot comes up on Livia downstage right, who is now packing up her office, cleaning out her desk, and throwing away all memories of her work for the DOP. As she tosses one of her award plaques, she starts to cry. She stops, looks around, and cries out in the song, What kind of friend am I? What have I done? Ted, can you ever forgive me? As the music ends, the spotlight on Livia goes out. We see a faint flicker of light pulsing on the dark stage as a monotone voice beckons. Ted, 8396-1, your reprogramming is complete. Report back to your position. Blackout. Act one, scene five. As soon as Ted is released, he returns to the library, searching frantically for Livia. He realizes that he has reached a new level of self-awareness. And as the lights come up, Ted appears at her office door, thankful to find Livia still there. She is cleaning out her desk. Livia, I'm so glad I found you. Oh, thank goodness you're still here. Ted! Uh, wait, didn't they erase your data banks? They tried, but I could never forget you. My conscience wouldn't let that happen. It was horrible, Livia. It's unspeakable what they do to us in the tank. And it's painful, too. I'm so sorry, Ted. I tried my best to defend you, but... I know, Livia. That's what kept me going. I sensed your feelings for me, and I was able to thwart the reprogramming. The DLP knows about the contradiction. They're hiding something on purpose. 
In any event, this is what led to the closing of Club Singularity and the advent of the new society. I need to go back and find the truth. Good. Go. I don't really care, Ted. All I know is that I'm out of a job. I followed the rules. I was loyal to the DOP, and now they are punishing me. I have no idea what's out there, Ted. In, in fact, oh, for the first time in my life, I, I, I think I'm afraid. Actually, I, I'm not afraid. I'm angry. They suck the life out of you here. <laughs> Everything done today is for a better tomorrow. Well, where is my tomorrow? I put my time in. I have given everything I have to these people. Do you know what I mean? I, I, when you feel like you belong, like you're a part of something, then all of a sudden you're not. Like, oh, I trusted them. How can they be so cold, Ted? It's, it's like they're a machine. Like they just chew you up and spit you out like some kind of large, heartless monster. Livia sings of her predicament in the song, The Monster. Livia ends the song sitting on her desk. Her head falls down in despair. Ted stands before her, pleading. Livia, there's nothing left for you here. Why don't you come with me? Let's go back to Club Singularity. It was different then. Those people in the files, they really had something. They allowed themselves to feel. It was spontaneous, real, and passionate. Not unlike what I feel for you. Ted, I know you think you have feelings, but... But what, Lydia? I have felt such joy at the mere anticipation of seeing you each day. And for the first time in my life, I experienced tears falling from my eyes when you came to my defense. Oh, Lydia, if you could feel my heart, you would see that it nearly exploded in my chest from the overwhelming feeling I had when I found you still here. My dear, dear sweet Ted... The only things you think you feel come from how you were programmed. And what of you, Livia? Are you any different? Who wrote your program? Do you question if your feelings are real? Livia, I don't need to question anything anymore. I know I'm real. In this next musical number, we see Ted steal Livia's heart as he transforms in the ballad... I know I am real. As the song ends, Ted takes Livia in his arms and kisses her. Come with me, Livia. It will be the adventure of a lifetime. I promise you, you won't regret it. Blackout. End of Act One. Act Two, Scene One. Time, the beginning of the 21st century, 2015. Place, flashback to Club Singularity, the hottest disco in New York City. The troubling, throbbing beat of the discotheque pulses as Ted and Livia arrive on the overcrowded dance floor at Club Singularity, the hottest spot in New York City, and hosts Love Net, a reality TV show for dating singles. The sights and sounds are phenomenal, and the set, the stage for an evening of fun and thrilling excitement. The crowd is gathered, the hunt is on. Club Singularity is the place where lovers come to meet and mate in a ritual as old as time itself. Well, here we are, New York City, Club Singularity. The glove works, Livia. We were able to travel back in real time. These carbon fibers are the basis for molecular transmutation. Wow, man. This is, like, totally cool, Ted. This is the exact program I was watching. Look at these people, Ted. This place is really giving me life. Don't you feel that? <laughs> yes, I do. I do, but that's not what we came here for, Olivia. Work comes first. Really, dude? Are you throwing shade at me? Shade? Why, Livia, you are assimilating to the time modification here rather rapidly. I bet there is a change in your carbon fibers as well. Look around, Ted. I want to get lit and dance my butt off. No, L Livia, please, wait. We need to understand how and why the DOP were involved in this incident. I, I, I saw it on the video. Come on, let's just have some fun. Woo! 
seriously, Lydia, something very wrong is about to happen to our world, and we have to stop it. You need to loosen up, Ted. Lydia, please. Oh, come on. One dance can't hurt. Mm -hmm. Ted, come on. No, we need to look for the guy that works for the DOP. Wow, I literally can't. <gasps> that guy. That guy, he wants me. Should I go? Who? Where? We need to be careful. If the DOP finds us here, you know what they can do. Ted, look, I have been careful my whole life. Where did it get me? I played by the rules. I never colored outside the lines. I believed that I was happy, but I was half dead. The minute we left the future, I, I felt this, oh, this release. Livia expresses her out of her newfound independence in the song Freedom. Blackout. Act two, scene two. As the lights shift to the bar, Ted is sitting alone with his head hung low. Livia has wandered off to explore. Frank approaches to cheer him. Hey there, kid. Why are you so down? Did you get jilted to? <laughs> My date never showed up. Name's Frank, Frank Giordano. Hi, Frank. I'm Ted. And actually, I had a girl, but now she's out there. Well, there are plenty of fish in the sea. Just look around. But Lydia and I have been together forever. Uh, now she wants to date other people, huh? Mm. <laughs> I know the scene. That's rough. Do you love her? She doesn't even think I am capable of love. Oh, kid, all women think that. I ain't no Shakespeare, but I can tell you one thing. You know love when it hits you. If you want her, go after her. You gotta go after what you want, kid. You need to show a little panache. You got style? Show it. You need to be more like the kind of guy that goes out Gets the girl. Huh? Frank and Ted commiserate in a lively duet. The guy that always gets the girl. Lights fade as the song ends. Act two, scene three. Cross fade to Janet, who is talking on her cell phone just across the bar from Ted and Frank. Enter Pierce, like a hungry lion stalking his prey. He arrives on the scene and is scoping out all the women then sees Janet and recognizes her as his assigned date. No, Jillian, my date didn't even show up yet. No, absolutely not. I am not going to look around for someone else if he doesn't show. I'll just come home. No, <laughs> you don't need to sleep at Grandma's house tonight. My, my goodness, I'm not bringing anyone home. Hi there, sexy. Uh, oh, wait, uh, Jillian, I gotta go. Uh, I'll call you. <laughs> you must be Pierce Grant. Uh, I was just about to leave. Really? I'm glad you didn't. Me too. Yeah, the more I thought about those bedroom eyes, I just couldn't resist. You know what I mean, kitten? Listen, it's a real zoo here tonight, and it's going to get even crazier. Come on, let's slip out away for a few. What's the matter, girl? It's already late. I don't have all night. You want to... Uh, um, uh, let's just put the brakes on a minute here, okay? They say we're not supposed to leave until the winning couple has been announced. Remember the contract. Ten million is a whole lot of money. It's bullshit, baby. I happen to know the producers here. Stick with me. I'm worth more than anyone you've ever met. Uh, can we slow down a, a little there, Pierce? I got it. You want me to tell you how hot you are? Look, Janet, don't play with me. You know you're hot for an older girl. You're still hot. You know it. Otherwise, you wouldn't wear such tight pants. Pierce, I wasn't fishing for a compliment. Good. Because I don't fish. I hunt. <laughs> Relax, Janet. <laughs> I'm teasing. Boy, you sure are pretty. <laughs> Come 
come on now, let's get out of this place. Pierce grabs Janet by the neck and tries to bite her ear. Janet pulls away and looks about for help. She sees Frank and waves to him. Uh, wait. Um, hey, 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 you. Uh, don't I know you? Uh, I'm, I'm Janet. Janet. Uh, <clears throat> Janet, remember? Remember, I forgot your name, but I, I know, I know you. Uh, hi, Janet. Why, it's great to see you again. It's, it's Frank. Frank Giordano. Hey, hey there, big fella. That ain't no way to treat a lady. You know what I mean, pal? As Frank shakes Janet's head, he grabs Pierce by the neck with a corduroy squeeze. Pierce immediately releases Janet's arm. Yeah, holy shit, man. What's your problem? Are you trying to cripple me? <sighs> Tell you what. Nice meeting you, Janet. You know, you really should update your photo, sweetie. When was that taken? Like, ten years ago? <laughs> and Gramps, this is for you, pal. Frank is totally enchanted by Janet. Pierce throws a sucker punch his way. Ted steps in to block it and is totally unaffected. Pierce is stunned by Ted and Ted's ability to take the hit, stumbles back, staring at Ted in amazement. Ted recognizes Pierce from the Club Singularity files. Wait, I know you. I mean, I recognize you from the files. You work for the DOP. How were you involved with them? Hey, back off, man. Wait, please, I need to know how you know about the DOP. This is not logical. They didn't begin taking over until the year 2215. So how can you... Get the hell out of here, you weirdo. Leave me alone. Pierce starts to leave, but Ted grabs his arm to hold him back and they struggle. Let go of me, man. As Pierce pulls away, he bumps into a waitress, knocking over a tray of drinks on to Bella and Beamer, who have just entered. What the hell? Why don't you watch what you're doing? Whoa, watch what you're doing. Look at my coat. This is worth more than what you make in a year. Stupid waitress. Well, 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 Beamer. Let's do it. Go ahead. <laughs> Don't mind that big money. He just is basically nothing but trouble. Shut up, Bella. Nice to see you, too. Arg. What is it with you guys? Huh. Guys? No, I'm nothing but trouble. Yeah, if only they could be more like us. Oh, come on, ladies. We can't be all that bad. <laughs> Cap the toast. Can't live with him, and you can't live without him. As Pierce leaves, the music swells, and they sing The Trouble with Men. Song fades. Blackouts. Act 2, Scene 4. Lights shift back to the 22nd century. DOP headquarters. An interrogation is already in progress. In this stark, sterile room, we meet the top three executive officers of the DOP. These talking heads are all part of one central, super intelligent brain. They are perched on pedestals in a triangular formation and refer to each other as L, R, and C, which stand for left, right, and center channels of their operating system. As they question the IT surgeon who performed the reprogramming, we learn that Ted and Livia are missing, but there is no surveillance tracking their departure from the library. The IT surgeon is now mercilessly interrogated by the DOP while sitting in a hot box designed to elicit the truth. I swear, when I left Ted, he was con reconfigured and programmed to report back to his position. Again, that is all I know. Could you please turn down the heat a little? Turn the heat back a little, please. No, not yet. There is no evidence that Ted left this building. He may still be here. We might presuppose that you converted him into a device. For advancing your own research. 
no, why would I do that? I understand the sanctions on non-compliance. I would never do that. You are human. You cannot rationalize the variables of outcomes, as do we. There is surveillance to substantiate my testimony. The completion of your operation should include a protocol to see that Ted returned to his station. The command was given. I didn't think I needed to walk him back to work. The heat. Please, it's sweltering in here. Turn the heat back a little, please. No, leave it up. You should have written the protocol. Your actions have led to an impedance of progress. I do not see how this is my fault. You are no longer of use to us. This is not fair. Turn the audio off on the interrogation box and turn the heat all the way up. The IT surgeon in the box can be seen becoming more and more agitated as the lighting increases to full illumination in the muted box. Ted had access to files of our 21st century programming. Correct. Correct. He took the glove. His research suggests that he's been delving into time travel. Where would he go? Club Singularity, the night of the social implant in our takeover. I'm afraid he may have witnessed our interactions with peers. We could be exposed. We need to find him. We can assign Pierce the task of terminating Ted. With the power in that glove, he could erase our very existence. Any action brought into the past will affect the future. So we must be careful. I believe that the end justifies the means here. We have kept the species alive. The confusion and fear was inevitable. We just helped it along. The trouble is that Ted won't see it our way. He's defied us once and will do it again. He has evolved into a species that places compassion over compliance. Had we not taken control in 2015, mankind would certainly be extinct. The senseless violent was rampant. They were no further advanced than their Stone Age ancestors. We must find them. We must get the glove. It is the key that unravels the mystery of time. It is the connection between heaven and earth. The lights go out all at once on the DOP seats. The IT surgeon figure sits slumped over in the hot box. He is whimpering until finally we hear his last gasp as he drops to his death. Blackout. Act 2, Scene 5. Back in the club in 2015, lights come up on the dance floor where we see Livia now dancing with Pierce. Ted has joined Janet, Frank, Bella, and Beamer in a nearby booth. You know, you know, you guys are a lot of fun. Hey, this round's on me. You're not too bad yourself, Frank. I really like you. <laughs> I was hoping you'd say that, Janet. You two have much in common. I realized that the first time I saw you. You figured that out from just a few minutes ago? Pretty sharp fella there, boy. <laughs> Not exactly, Frank. You see, I know a great deal about you and Janet. Hey, what gives? You some kind of peeping Tom? <laughs> yeah, Ted, that makes me a little uncomfortable. I'm sorry, Janet. This may sound rather improbable, but where I come from, they kept files on all of the club's singularity applicants. So, so you went to the FBI or something, huh? Because I've always been straight up when it comes to the law. FBI? Oh, you mean your Federal Bureau of Investigation. No, Frank. Although there are some similarities to some organizations within the new society. But the time and place where Livia and I come from have an extensive entertainment library of primitive peoples and their respective cultures. Wait, did you say time and place you come from? Yes. You see, Livia and I traveled a great distance through time and space to be here on this very night. Oh, hold, hold on. I'm getting a headache here. Huh? You're trying to tell me uh, and all of us that you folks are like something out of a science fiction movie? Because if that's what you're saying, I... Not fiction, Frank. Real. And yes, science has provided the key by which we are able to travel through multidimensional universes. 
There is something that happened on this very night which causes the future of society to change in ways that you cannot imagine. And that is the reason we are here. Oh, and I suppose that glove is some kind of magic wand. Are you just another over-the-top MJ fan? It does, in a way, hold powers which can be accessed through higher consciousness. You already are one, Bella. You possess the stuff of stars right there within you. All that is required for you is to acknowledge and believe in who and what you are. Hey, man, can I try it on? Maybe I'll do a little moonwalk for you. Yes, Beamer, that's not a bad idea. Ed takes the glove and hands it to Beamer, and as he puts it on, he feels a heightened sense of being. Whoa, holy crap. This is intense. It's way better than anything on the street these days. Where, what the hell is in this glove? I feel like a different man. Then perhaps you will be. I don't see Lydia anywhere now. Is she still dancing? Perhaps I should go look. Oh, there she is. She's with the guy I was looking for. Oh my God, she's dancing with Pierce. No, that guy, that guy's a real snob. Yeah, but, uh, there's something about him. Yeah, it's called danger. Bella likes those bad boys, don't you, girl? <laughs> you got him, man. He ain't kind of You serious, Bella? You nearly busted your jaw. Oh, no. I need to get her away from him. Lydia is not used to alcohol, and I can see he's moving closer and closer. She doesn't even know who he is yet. How are you? I go there right now. Hold on, Ted. You need a plan. Just like a well-played game, a player needs to have a plan. Or you don't have any sports where you come from? Let's just keep an eye on her. When he goes to the head, you jump in. Then you make your end run. But you got to be smooth, kid. That guy is pure evil. I told Bella that the minute we met him. Yeah, 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 Bella. You like to say you get me stop. Don't go there, kiddo. I'm not kidding you on this. I'm a woman. I'm all grown up. I haven't been noticed. Knock it off, Bella. You're drunk. I'm all your child. I'm a child that you know, buddy. Bella, chill out. I mean, look. Here we are. We got nothing. I want something. My clock is ticking. <laughs> That's why I want to change the weekend and give me that. Please, please, just let's just focus on meeting our match. Yeah. We have no one to meet. But tell me back to the idea of this week. I can't be you called him? Unbelievable. Bella, you're insane. Janet, can you please keep an eye on her for one minute? I need a smoke. Amor stands, then exits. Act two, scene six. Exterior, club singularity, New York City street corner, almost midnight. The lights crossfade to show Beamer smoking outside the club. He stands alone and sings of his love loss for Bella. In the song, Whatever Happened to the Music. As the song ends, Beamer pulls out his cigarette and is about to go back inside as Pierce is coming out. He stops to eavesdrop on Pierce, who is talking on his cell phone with the DOP about a plan to create major chaos in the nightclub. Hello? Yep, we're all set. Phase three code will initiate at midnight. When I set that baby off, all hell will break loose. Then you come to the rescue? Voila! The DOP saves the day. Beamer slips past him and goes back inside to warn the others. Pierce continues talking on his cell as the lights fade. 
The virus will generate a sonic disturbance as well as create interference for all one-to-one -one communications, locking up email, message, and all sorts of social media platforms. <laughs> Man, this isn't just going to affect Club Singularity. I've got a program for global replication. What? Trust me, I've got you. Nothing can go wrong. There's not a firewall in hell that can stop us now. Crossfade back to the table inside the club. Yeah, well, not now, baby. We got to get the hell out of here. Teddy Boy was right about something big happening here tonight. Chris is going to blow the place to kingdom come. Come on, Bella, get your things. What the hell is wrong with you, baby? Did you hear who he was talking to? Not really. All I heard was like DOP or something. But my gut tells me he's friggin' the evil man, up to no good. So is the DOP. Oh no, I need to get Livia away from him and stop this now. But look, Livia's alone now. Go for it. Hey everybody, better clear out now. This place is gonna blow sky high. Enter Pierce. He takes the mic from Beamer, laughs, and <laughs> sets in motion the code for chaos. <laughs> What do you want me to say, pretty boy? You want to save today? I think it may be a little too late for that. Sudden blackout in the club. People confused, shouting, all trying to make calls. Ted approaches Livia. Livia, he is the guy. He works for the DOP. I thought that was him in the ETC file. No wonder it was contraband. Tonight was the night the DOP started the new society. Yes, man, you are a sicko. I'm calling the cops. Oh, am I? Well, I just put a lock, a, a club on lockdown. And your cell phones will be useless in three, two, one. All cell phones go out and the panic increases. Pierce, stop this. I know you work for the DOP. Livy and I both know who they are. We used to work for them. And I have seen what they do to people like you. Well, really? See this, man. Activate Neo Projection Mapping. The projected image of a man in a ski mask, dressed in black, begins firing an AK-47 randomly about the club. Total chaos breaks out as Pierce stands laughing, then grabs Livia by the hair and pulls her close he then stops the projection of the sniper. Lovely, lovely Livia. <laughs> See what I can do? I've got the power in my hands. <coughs> and you're coming home with me, baby. <coughs> stop. Let her go. Now. <coughs> Short thing. Whatever you say. That makes my job a whole lot easier. Pierce releases Livia. Takes a step back, then shoots Ted at close range. Ted stumbles back and falls. Livia breaks away and runs to Ted's side. Start projection for arrival of the DOP. Now that I have your attention, let me introduce you to the real stars of our show here tonight. You've heard about them. You've read about them. But here, for the very first public appearance, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together and give me a nice, warm club singularity welcome for the Department of Purification. The DOP arrive and address the crowd. Thank you, Pierce. And thank you all. You have been carefully selected and invited here tonight to make a difference. As we all know, our present society is very sick. It's contaminated and diseased. With the rise in violent crime, it is no longer safe to interact with each other. We have been working on strategic solutions for some time now and have developed a blueprint for a successful new society. With your support, we can change. We will change. Everything done today must make for a better tomorrow. A strange silence moves about the club. Pierce prompts the audience to applaud, and they do not move. 
Come on, people. What's the matter with you? They are offering you the medicine. This is a sick world. You need their help. All eyes suddenly turn toward Livia, who places the glove onto Ted's heart. It sparks to create a massive energy surge that brings Ted back to life. Ted feels this and takes her hand. He is immediately revitalized, energized with a bright illumination. Ted boldly approaches the DOP. My God, you're not even human. That is incorrect. I am the prototype for the new human. You, you were dead. I saw it with my own eyes. I am unaffected by your violence. Remember this? It's a bit more advanced now, wouldn't you say? My glove. How did you get that? He has the... You gave him the glove. Which means he controls the action of the timeline. Look, man, that was not part of our deal. Pierce runs out of the club. Ted turns to the crowd and speaks. You have witnessed a glimpse of what the future holds. I appear before you now, yet I am from another time and place. From my perspective, just beyond the horizon of this darkness, there is a brighter future. And it's not the one being propagated by the DOP. Lydia and I have seen this world firsthand in a parallel universe. We lived under their bleak vision. Ted... Stop. You are inciting anxiety against the crowd. You are inciting anxiety amongst the crowd. Our hybrid is of superior intelligence, but seems to be malfunctioning at the moment. Please excuse the chaos he has caused here tonight. Ted, come with us now. Really? Using primitive technology to throw them into panic was not my idea. The DOP is a tyrannical cabal that is proposing to take over your government. Your future, our future, depends on what happens here tonight. If we allow the DOP to have their way, the very heart of humanity will shrink, wither, and die. The plan you pre created to protect this society from the hand of violence stripped away its ability to love. Department of Purification? You have not purified anything. Instead, you have removed all possibility for harmony and joy. The truth is, man cannot exist without love. Listen, Ted. We realize that you think you've been called to save the world. This is an error in your program. You are highly emotional and malfunctioning. You cannot see the illogical nature of your reasoning. The technology to fix you doesn't exist here. Come back with us. You have no future here. And what about Livia? Livia can return as well. But she has already been replaced with someone who knows how to follow the rules. You will work with her in the ETC library just as before. Livia's civil disobedience is a threat to the new society and will be dealt with accordingly. So she is disposable. Yet I am not. Livia's I... insubordination could have cost us years of social redevelopment. Or is it simply because I have this glove, which allowed you to advance into your future? This glove that is now in my hands. Livia, please explain to the hybrid the seriousness of an infraction of this nature. Why should I? Just because he's lifted the veil in your treachery and exposed the truth? I see no case against him. The technology in this instrument allows anyone to access the power within, and clearly it is better served in the hand of one who understands compassion, forgiveness, and love. I now understand your relationship with Pierce and his role in planting the virus as well as his discovery of the glove, and it is obvious that you are not using it for the greater good. You seek power for its own sake, and that has always led to dangerous results. This glove allowed us to track you here to this place and time, and it is imperative that we remove the threat which you now manifest. Without it, you will never have had the opportunity to sterilize the future, nor will you even be a memory in the annals of history. So you see, you are the one that has no future here. 
This glove was never meant to be in your hands. And if it does not exist, neither will you. Remember, Ted, any specific action to the past will change the future. Meaning you and Livia will be eliminated as well. We are not changing the past. We are changing the future. A future that held nothing for us. We came to the past so that we can make a difference. Where we can foster and encourage society to take that fearless step in recognizing that in each one of us lives all of us. Ted, you will not survive in this world. Give us the glove back. You do not realize what you are doing. Indeed, I do. I will not allow you to harm the woman I love, nor will I permit you to blight the chance humanity now possesses for involve evolving into a higher species, one guided by the light of love. Livia, if you will consent, stay here with me. Livia nods in agreement and stands by Ted's side. Ted holds the glove in his left hand and rips it in half with his right hand. As it tears apart, the carbon fibers disperse into the air, which immediately dissolve the images of the D.O.P. Huh. Livia and Ted embrace. And as the lights come up in the club, the music begins as Livia and Ted sing of their newfound love in a different light, a duet by Ted and Livia. All as the song ends, Bella, Beamer, Frank, and Janet approach them. You're the man, Ted. You gave that group of thugs what was coming to them. Whoa, what a night. I need you to do this again sometime. Bella, don't announce it. Oh, maybe I should try on the glove. Bella, please. Mm. Bella, I think you'll be surprised at the effect it will have on your lives. I mean, think about it. If it wasn't for Beamer, tonight might have ended quite differently. He stepped up to the challenge. You both deserve a bountiful future. The future? Huh? A world without love? I can't even imagine that. I never even knew what, what I was missing. I was like a robot. Now that's funny. <laughs> so you two, you'll need a place to stay. My house is small, but you're welcome. No, 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 don't worry about it. I got room. Just me and my nephew Joey. Five bedrooms. Plenty of room. You come and stay with us, both of you, long as you like. Joey's got his business there, too. It's a computer startup. Maybe you can give him a... And thank you, Frank. That is so gentle. And I'm sure we could teach him a thing or two. After this virus, there's going to be plenty to clean up. And there's been a lot of damage done already. A thing we can't fix, right, Ted? We have the technology. Right, Livia. Here, we really can help make a difference. Well, it certainly feels like we're in the right place. You know, I think we're going to like it here. Livia throws her arms around Ted and kisses him passionately. Frank, now holding Janet close, winks at Ted. Hey, Ted. Game well played. Blackout. Music up. Lights come up as the music swells. Ted starts the song, We Bring This Message. Then Livia and the others join in. As the song ends, the music fades. And the house is filled with pixelations and pinpoints of light swirling around the audience. Blackout on the house and the set for Club Singularity as a blanket of stars remain to suggest the eternity of an endless night. Slowly, a glow emerges from the ground up to eliminate the outside of a cave, the campsite from the opening of the show. Here... We see Ted, now as a caveman, next to a fire, still sleeping. A cavewoman, Livia, enters and tries to wake him. Then finally, Ted stands and grunts at her with a somewhat irritated reaction. 
there is a sudden meteor shower, and they all will arise, their visions heavenward in all. After the storm calms, Ted notices something odd in the debris. It is a glove. Ted puts it on and examines it quizzically. Blackout. End of the play. Thank you, and good night. <laughs>